So now having established what strategy board games are in part one, I'm going to move on to part two and discuss my history with these board games. Beginning with my fateful first introduction, I have a vivid uh, memory of you know how I was introduced to strategy board games. Beginning with that uh, fateful introduction, you know, progressing then through the years and to you know nowadays, you know, what does my relationship with strategy board games look like? So I'll talk about again my introduction and the history with uh, these strategy board games. So I alluded to my introduction to them. I again can vividly recall what my first experience with a real strategy board game was, if you if you will. Um, so I guess let me preface that by saying I had played games like a little bit more advanced than you know the ones I referenced in uh, part one, Shoots and Ladders, Candyland, Monopoly, The Game of Life. I'd played games like, say, Risk. Um, I don't think, uh, maybe even dabbled at that point with, say, Axis and Allies, but I'd never played anything else up until the point i want to say it was maybe the summer of yeah summer uh, of 2008 so my daughter we just had my firstborn my daughter abigail and she loved to take naps on dad's chest and i remember oftentimes as she would do this during these summer days going on to xbox live arcade back when i had this opportunity right when i didn't have four kids running around and She'd be taking her nap, and I would be playing this game that I stumbled upon called The Settlers of Catan. That, my friends, is was my gateway game, what they call, or those in the hobby refer to as gateway games. Introductory game that, you know, going back to the idea of weight and how heavy is a game, they're on the lighter end of the spectrum, right? Games that can then lead to you know, if the person is becomes interested, like was the case for me, lead to then diving into much heavier games. Uh, so this was the proverbial gate gateway game for me. Uh, the at the time, so you know what the popular gateway games are um, change. You know, as you progress through the years, and certain games become less popular, and so on. But the two that were by far the most popular when I first uh, got into the world of strategy board games was Catan, and then Carcassonne, and I have the big box for Carcassonne here, which means that, you know, so that after games become super popular, they'll release big boxes for them where they become the, the regular game and then all the expansions, or at least some of the expansions that have been released, you know, since the original game. Um, so anyway, this though, granted, I have Carcassonne and played Carcassonne. It was really the Settlers Catan, and in particular, playing it on Xbox Live Arcade, that was my, the, the experience that stood out to me, where I was like, whoa, what? This is awesome. You know, what is this awesome game where you have to think and, um, you know, you can build uh, resources up and establish like certain strategies and do different uh, paths to victory, as I referenced in uh, part one. Right? What, what, this, this game, this kind of a game exists. I was four and I played it, uh, I, you know, I've re referred to in my videos, I think, especially, you know, episode zero how obsessive I am. And I played that game constantly when I first discovered it. Like probably literally every time Abby was taking a nap, I was playing that game. Um, and so that was my first introduction to the wonderful world of strategy board games. Once I discovered these games existed, I moved on. You know, I played Catan and not, not only was it my introduction to strategy board games, but it was the, the, the gateway game for many, many others, many thousands of others as well. Um, so it's, been immensely popular again carcassonne was uh, was extremely popular and still is as well now personally i will say that i've moved on in some sense i can't even tell you the last um i've moved on because it has a little bit again going back to what i discussed in part one has a little bit too much luck or randomness for my liking um you know what you're doing in, in Catan is you're gaining resources kind of based on die rolls so there's still die rolls in Catan, right? Uh, so hence, there's going to be some luck factor, randomness involved. And so you can have the best numbers in the game in the sense that the most likely or probable to roll. And then just because fate would have it, right, during the game, don't roll. And so, um, you know, the idea is over time, that probably is all a wash, right? The, hot, the better numbers really do roll more often and so on. But the fact of the matter is, in Catan, you can play really well. 
you can make the most optimal decisions possible and still just lose through no fault of your own. And so, again, great gateway game. While it's my interest in it has waned over time, I you know I'll never lose my debt of gratitude for the game and for introducing me to the wonderful world of strategy board games. Um, granted, again, it has a little bit too much luck involved, given you know the point I, I raised earlier. Uh, a little bit too much luck involved for me nowadays, at least given all these other great games I have as well. But having said that, it still has a spot in my collection because again it's a great gateway game if there's uh you know games with a certain with a little bit more luck um, those are great games to pull out when you have gamers and non-gamers playing together because it's going to mitigate right the more luck you throw into the game it's going to mitigate more the um the, the advantages of the the gamers would have right those that play strategy board games often right it's going to mitigate their natural advantage um, and put the non-gamers sort of more on equal footing. So there's a, a, a place, certainly a place for this sort of game. And not to say like non-gamers are you know dumb or anything like that, but hopefully you get the idea, right? That the strategy board gamers are gonna be more familiar with how strategy board games work in general. And, and so that's obviously going to give them an advantage uh, amongst other things. So uh, again, great ga gateway game, still a great gateway game, still has a spot in my collection. and will never lose i will never lose that debt of gratitude i have for again it opening my eyes to the wonder, wonderful world of strategy board games i do have one of its expansions traders and barbarians i've played this game so many times online as well where you can play you can find places to play not only the original but then you know the all the expansions as well actually recently so uh went over for a game session with my son and his friends and then some of the dads and they had a by mistake bought an extra copy of the five to six player expansion and said here you can have it because we can't return it anymore um, although I, like i said i don't remember the last time i played Catan anyway so i don't know i'll be pulling that out but um that's my Catan stuff and again uh klaus teber tabor i'm not sure how you actually say his last name thank you klaus for again what you've done for me i will never forget it so that was my introduction to strategy board games. Granted, I had played, you know, Risk, I wouldn't really consider, I guess there's some strategy involved, but there's there's just too much, again, rolling dice and randomness. It's kind of, I guess, maybe for me, in between, like, the games I grew up with as a kid, like Life, uh, Monopoly, Chance, or sorry, uh, Shoots and Ladders, Candyland, and so on. And then in between those kinds of games and like then actual strategy board games, if you will, Risk would be somewhere in the middle. It's kind of on the way. It's not even to Catan, I would say. So, but I just want to say it wasn't as if I had never played anything like this. Risk, right? Insofar as that's close to a strategy board game, I had played that maybe like a handful of times in my life. But otherwise, I'd never played any strategy board games until I discovered Catan, and that again opened my eyes to these kinds of games. Uh, I started. I should say, like once I started playing, it was almost instantaneously that I started also designing games. It's just I have a very creative nature, and so it was almost instantly as I was playing some of these games, I was thinking about the rules and I wonder why this is this way, and you know, would it? How would it be if it was instead the rules were you know this way? Uh, would it be better? Would it be worse? And so I started tinkering. You know, not only, so I started pretty much creating my own games right away. Uh, and then in addition, like also tinkering with uh, um, rules and like I said, in uh, published games, games that were already published. And so actually preparing for this, I, uh, speaking of risk, I remembered, you know, how when friends and I would play, I actually sort of tinkered with this rule. I don't remember what the specifics were with respect to it, but I created a, a special assassin who then we, uh, put white out on the tips of one of each color, right? So everybody, ever each color or each player would have an assassin. And again, I don't remember exactly how he worked, but he was super powerful with certain powers and worked certain ways. So that was just an example of how, uh, one of the ways I remembered that I sort of would tinker with going way back, tinker with some of the rules, um, you know, decades ago in some of these games. And I was wondering then if, uh, if the white out assassin would still be in my copy. And sure enough, I did you got at least one of the colors have it and i'm sure the other ones probably do as well but um anyway so that was one example of 
again, just tinkering with these rules going way back um, and started designing games myself at that point. So over the years, reference playing like Risk with Friends, a lot of us have probably played Risk, um, a good sort of social game that can create some uh, intense feelings as well. But I've been introduced, so again, I was fortunate enough to discover these games back in 2008. And since that time, I've been introduced pretty much all my good friends or tried to to you know strategy board games they've played pretty much all my close friends have at least tried strategy board games playing them with me in you know oftentimes my own designs but then also Catan or any other games that I bring to to their house on a Friday night or something like that uh, and so one you know one example of a good friend of mine who graduated he went to a, a KU grad school with me and uh, you know I introduced him during that time to strategy board games and so he become, became very immersed in them as well has a big collection and so whenever you know we live in different places now but then whenever we get together we will literally all we'll do is just play board games he, he and i uh and for you know he has uh we both have like gaming groups uh, i'm not able to attend mine near as regularly as he is so he he's able to get his fix maybe a little bit more often than, than me um but you know so that that is awesome when he when we visit because we're both able to sort of get our fix then and we just play literally that's pretty much all we do is these strategy board games we'll literally play like 30 games in a row like he'll oftentimes he'll come visit me stay you know stay here and morning tonight we'll be playing strategy games and the last time he visited i wanted to say we played literally 30 games over the three day visit so um shout out to joe uh, we haven't been able to do that as much due to recent events with the virus and whatnot, but um, thought it would be worthwhile to point out how, you know, I'm affecting then all my friends and you know, some family members and so on and trying to get them, suck them into this, what I consider to be wonderful world of um, strategy board games. Um, oh, so one other like funny kind of story that... Uh, I guess kind of speaks to how involved some of these games can be too that I remember and then my wife and I will chuckle at sometimes. Um, so this is way back, um, way, way back when I first started playing and this was with respect to Axis and Allies, another game that's a little bit more involved, right? Definitely more involved. It's a war game, but not as intense as, you know, a lot of other traditional war games that gamers will be familiar with. Right, it's kind of a gateway game to war games, if you will. Um, but anyway, I remember uh, one time, shout out to Dan, another friend of mine. We were uh, setting up, right, we're getting ready to ha to play this game. The new game we had just purchased, Axis and Allies. And uh, my wife was leaving with some of her friends to go to a movie, go out to eat and whatnot. And so we're getting ready to play. And she says, have fun. Fast forward, whatever, two, three, three and a half, four hours, whatever it was later. She comes strolling in, saying bye to her friends, and saying, oh, how was the game? And I look up and I said, well, we're just about ready to start playing it. So we had literally, right, spent the whole time going through the rules, figuring it out, setting it up, right? So these games, some of these games, right, can be super intense, and uh, that has always kind of stuck out in my mind, um, you know, as kind of an interesting sort of tale, if you will, that speaks to, again, how involved some of these games can be. Now, one of the things I've grown to appreciate, again, is a game with, you know, that's not super complex, that has simple rules, right? Relatively few rules. So maybe like the opposite of, of the Axis and Allies rule set, but then affords deep gameplay, just given that simplicity though, right? Um, and so I think actually Torres is a really good example, arguably my favorite game of all time. Uh, great example of that where you know, there's not a lot of rules to it. You can pick it up fairly fast, uh, but yet you will be learning. And I'll go into my experience with Torres here in a little bit. You will go. You will be learning the nuances of the game, hun literally hundreds of games in to playing Torres. Um, so it's much easier to get to the table, much quicker to learn, right? Much quicker to teach, and yet it's just as deep, if not deeper, than the game that took three and a half to four hours to learn and set up. Anyway, nothing against, you know, Axis and Allies, but just a point, you know, that I think is interesting, right? That there's something, it's more of a shout out, I guess, to what I would consider great designs. Like, uh, again, one thing I'll get into is one of my favorite designer, designers is Wolfgang Kramer. He's my favorite, actually. 
And so he and Michael Kiesling designed Torres. And so it's more speaking to the polish or why games like Torres are so good. Right? So Axis and Allies offers some depth, right? It's an enjoyable experience, but again, it can be tedious to set up and, and learn. Torres offers all those other things and yet is simple and easy to set up and learn. So anyway, actually, as I mentioned, speaking about Torres, the next thing I wanted to sort of get into, and that's uh, I do play, it's one of the things I wanted to mention with respect to the next point, and that's that I play online these days. Actually, I started playing online probably maybe three, four years after I started playing, you know, these physical copies. I discovered, hey, you can play a lot of these games online. Various sites uh, offer, you know, various games for free oftentimes. And so one of the sites that I have definitely played most often at over the years, I think it's... God, so I know it's, if you just look up Yukata, that'll get you there. Uh, over 100 games, you know, published games, they offer for free. And the thing I like a lot about it, if you watched in my other videos, you know I hate advertising. And um, it's ad-free. So really like that site. So shout, shout out to them. Uh, and so I remember playing there, you know, for, for at least a decade. Um, play there. The frequency that I play online definitely varies and depends on what's going on. But I will say, a uh, moment to brag, speaking about Torres, uh, mentioning Torres. So if you go online to Yukata, I'm actually and have been the number one rated player on their website for Torres for uh, quite some time. And uh, it's kind of like I said, a bragging point. But, but mentioning Torres, one thing I wanted to say is so I mentioned this earlier. Uh, it was a hard sort of climb to the top of those rankings. And one thing I vividly remember, I don't remember his exact username, but I remember playing, I think it's like Hawk X was his, his username. I would, and he was super highly ranked and we would have these duels and I would learn so much. You know, this is after playing hundreds of games. I would learn so much about a different sort of play style, his play style. And then I would play other highly ranked players who would play completely differently. So again, that speaks to the elegance of this design and how even with very simple rules and not many of them, you can have this incredibly deep gameplay that emerges. And that's what I really like and would say stands out about Kramer's game, Wolf, his games in particular, Wolfgang Kramer, Kramer. That's what I really like about his games in particular Torres. Now, I don't know, I have it. So on Board Game Geek, right, I go and I rank all my, rate all my games and it's been number one for a long time. I don't know if that's just because I'm, Number one, that's the one game I'm number one at. I didn't mention, you know, all the other games that I played on Yukata and I'm not number one on or at, right? And who knows how many players, and it's on there, but how many players are even ranked, right? Or have tried to play it. But um, yeah, so you can go on Yukata and I play a ton of other games. I mentioned Stone Age. I think that was in uh, part one. I'd love to play Stone Age on Yukata uh, against you know, other really good players. And another game where you will see different paths to victory and different ways to go about trying to, to win. Um, so yeah, I definitely have enjoyed playing online as well as you know physical copies. I've enjoyed playing online versions of these uh, strategy games. I mentioned sort of gaming groups. Uh, my buddy that will get together and play those marathon sessions. He has a gaming group and I mentioned earlier how you know, I've had various gaming groups mentioned going um, to a gaming session with my son and his friends and a few of the dads and how we'll, we've actually gotten together a handful of times uh, for that gaming group, if you will. You know, we'll change where we, you know, we've hosted and other uh, parents have hosted and so on. And I have a, you know, another gaming group. I actually have gamed rather extensively in a group with a former student as well. So that, you know, I would, I mention oftentimes that to classes that I teach that one of my interests is strategy is strategy board games and one of my students you know it's probably been almost a decade now you know during the course of the semester we would have these extensive discussions on games and you know he invited me to check out his gaming group after the semester was over and it turns out that I actually knew uh, another guy that was in the group who's actually uh, lives rather close to me and has a daughter and that's the same age as my oldest daughter. So anyway, small world. And uh, have, I just wanted to mention that uh, I do have various gaming groups that I've participated in, played, played in as well, and enjoy those. Try to get my family involved as much as possible, you know, extended family and immediate family. One thing I'll say is that like, 
I definitely, you know, people have various views of strategy, of board games in general. And I think one of the issues for, I would say for people who are sort of not necessarily drawn to them immediately is that they have a certain impression of board games, much like I did, you know, grow, you know from growing up and being exposed to certain games. Now, I personally always liked games, playing games, even those not so good ones, right, that I've mentioned before, Canyonland and so on, even as a kid, I would still like playing games. Um, but if that's your only exposure to what games are, then, you know, you'd probably be a little hesitant to, you know, get into the game world, right? Well, uh, again, so there's some hesitancy, and I think that that is oftentimes one of the, the sources of the hesitancy is that we have limited exposure, and many of us aren't familiar with all the awesome themes and rich gameplay that is actually available. Uh, and then others just, you know, it's not their thing playing uh, game, games, whether they're really cool games, I would say, or those more traditional games that a lot of us are used to. Regardless, they're just not um, into games or maybe they don't mind playing games, but a lot of people aren't on the spectrum like me where you could play games seemingly literally all the time. Uh, and so that's been kind of a, the whole point is that's been kind of an issue I've tried to navigate cautiously over the years um, because I want my, you know, the people I'm around to want to play games with me, right? I want to have people to play these games with, but I don't want to like overexpose them to it, right? And make it so that they, they just sick of it, right? So, um, and I think that's, sadly, it's kind of happened with some, with my kids uh, as they've gotten older, they just play it so much. I just wonder, like, thinking back how much I would have, love to have grown up with all the games we have right um, that my kids have exposure uh, the ability to play how much i would have loved to have just not necessarily even played them but to like dive into the games and and explore the components and the rules and how they worked and um but that's again that's just not to, for everybody and when you grow up with that then it's not as cool i guess uh, and so or over time right even when it maybe was cool again if you you just get used to it and then over time it's not as uh, uh, as interesting anymore so um certainly something that i worry about and i'm cautious about when it comes to how much i try to play kit games with my kids in my extended family having said that i definitely do and have raised my kids playing games and think it's great that they're exposed to this huge library of strategy games where they actually, one of the things I'll mention when I talk about in the next part, the value of games is they can offer a great learning experience. You learn about you know, different themes, um, different areas of history and so on. It also helps us, right, I'll get into this more in more detail, but right, the calculated process and then like thinking through things, right? I think that these are all great things. So I'll elaborate on, you know, the boons of, um, playing these strategy games with kids then. But so I just wanted to point out now that, um, so fast forward now, I have four kids always trying to get, you know, a game to the table every now and then with, with the kids. And the younger ones seem to, to be more inclined to play than the older ones at this point. But um, we do still try to get, again, family game nights and certain games they like better, certain themes, and that's true of everyone, right? Um, but yeah, that's more or less, uh, I think all I want to say, you know, so pretty much ever since I was first introduced to them, I've been playing and designing them religiously, strategy board games. Now, granted, with having four kids and as they've gotten older, my time to do both of those has dramatically declined or decreased the amount of time I have for that, that both playing and designing games. But I've always, as much as possible, right? play and design these, these games and that's been true again since day one since my first introduction to them so um just as much involved in the wonderful world of strategy board games 15 years after my first introdu introduction nowadays right, as i was back when i first started playing Catan. uh i guess i'll just end with mentioning so i brought a couple of these others so agricola i mentioned Uwe rosenberg as being one of the heavier offering some of the heavier games, and this would be an example of one of the heavier games. And I, I brought it to the table, so to speak, because it's one of the first few that I, I purchased. Uh, so that one is an example of one of the first few games that was added to my collection when I first started playing these games. So Catan was one of the first ones in Power Grid, also a very 
famous game the most game, gamers. Um, Friedman Fries is the designer. He hasn't designed as much stuff lately, but very uh, prolific designer over the years. Power Grid is probably his most uh, well-known game. And then uh, one of my first purchases as well was El Grande, another game by Wolfgang Kramer. This time he designed it with Richard Ulrich, but El Grande is a really um, famous strategy board game amongst, at least amongst gamers as well. So thought I'd show some of the, the very first games I, I added to, to my collection when I first started playing. Anyway, so that's part two. In the next part, I'm going to speak to what I think, and I've already alluded to some of this and foreshadowed some of it, but what I think are, you know, the value or the benefits to be gleaned from playing strategy board games, what I in particular really get from playing and designing them, and then what I think people in general have to gain from playing, and then for, for the few that also design them, what they have to gain from designing them as well. So that'll be what you have to look forward to in part three. Thanks. We're about to get real experimental here in this first episode of Experimenting with Existence because I'm going to, you know, this is such a deep dive, I'm going to add a part two to part two before we get into part three. So what ended up happening is, as I was preparing to record part three, it occurred to me that I left out a pretty important uh, aspect of part two, you know, my history with strategy board games. And so far as, you know, I left something out with, while it's not directly, you know, strategy board games, it's not directly related to strategy board games, it is nonetheless related. And that is my history with strategy video games, which actually goes far further back. Uh, so I wanted to say a little bit of something about strategy video games and my history with these games and how the writing was probably on the wall in terms of me loving strategy board games when I would eventually discover them later, given my love for strategy video games. So that's what I'm going to do here real quick before getting into part three, where I'll talk again about, you know, more or less why I think we should play strategy board games, what we get out of them. Um, but OK, so this short spiel about strategy video games and really, again, how that should have been. Um, if any, anybody that knew me back then, that would probably have been a good indication that I would like strategy board games later on down the road. And so I guess really, again, it goes, my, my, I was trying to re remember my very first experience kind of with a strategy video game that I really fell in love with. And that goes back to the Sega Genesis. I remember so way back to my, my youth, some of you, Probably many of you viewers, no doubt, don't even maybe know what a Sega Genesis is. Maybe you haven't even heard of it. It's a very old school uh, video game system. So this is way back. I went and tried to dig out what I could of my strategy Sega Gen. I actually have some of them. So these are ancient. These go back way, way back to my youth. Tried to dig out what I could. I didn't spend too much time trying to get get uh, the games out, but I found a couple of them that I'm mentioning here. I, I have this vivid memory, okay, going back to playing Sega Genesis and some games in particular on the Sega Genesis. So one of them is this one, Aerobiz Supersonic. Loved this game. Uh, actually, before I played this one, I played by, so this company, Koei, K-O-E-I, um, I became familiar with this company because of my love for these strategy games. Uh, first, the one, first one I remember playing on the Sega Genesis was Nobunaga's Ambition. I have it somewhere in here, but that's one of the ones I could not find. Uh, so I played that one and, you know, it was pretty in depth and took a lot of time to sort of figure out. But once uh, I did, I, you know, I fell in love with it. And so, you know, there I was as a very young kid, you know, playing Nobunaga's Ambition and, so I'm like, what is, you know, this is an awesome game. Are there similar games like that? And so I began with the company that I mentioned and found basically any anything I could get that they put out, I tried to, you know, acquire then and play. They had one on the American Revolution. I don't remember what it was called. Um, there were a couple other ones, but the, the two that I remember in particular really spending a lot of time playing were Nobunaga's Ambition and Aerobiz Super, Supersonic. So in this one, you're basically kind of, it's it's kind of like a, almost a simulation game, simulation slash strategy. Uh, so you are basically, you own a, uh, an airplane 
uh, company. And so you're tasked with sort of setting the prices, you know, the flights, buying the airplanes. And, uh, but I love the choices involved and, you know, certain uh, airplane companies that built the parts for the airplanes, they would have sales. And so I love the different choices involved and when, you know, when should you focus on uh, purchasing, you know, airplanes and increasing your supply of that versus, you know, running advertisements and trying to promote certain flights and so on. And so, uh, and then, then you had to pay, pay attention to your competitors too, right? Who are doing the exact same thing and really loved that and spent a lot of time again playing, playing this one. I'm actually trying to get my hands on, so preparing for this, uh, I got, got so nostalgic, I would like to go back and actually play this, and so um, I'd like to maybe pick up a, a Sega Genesis. We don't have one anymore, um, but uh, man, I just remember spending so much time on that. And another one that I did come across that it it, it uh, is definitely strategic and involves, again, the long-term planning sort of thing, and there was a lot of choices involved, F uh, Fight Through the Tyrants, and I spent a ton of time on this one. I remember loving this this game as well. Uh, so those are so so that goes back to the Sega Genesis era, way back to my childhood, way before I discovered strategy board games. Um, but they were had a very similar feel, and so that should have foreshadowed, like I mentioned earlier. You know, wouldn't be any surprise fast forward when I discovered strategy board games, which basically capture you know the same sort of feel of the video game, but in a sort of, sort of physical way. Uh, there no doubt there shouldn't have been any doubt that I would love strategy board games as well. Um, yeah, I mentioned how the Sega Genesis. That's really when I remember sort of discovering strategy video games, and then it's probably what decades later when I finally discovered strategy board games. But I really did love and play these strategy video games, and so my love for strategy video games has never ceased. You know, naturally. Uh, why would it of course my time to play them again with four kids that might be minimized but uh, to this day i still enjoy playing strategy strategy video games in fact uh my family would probably uh, still remember this a couple it's been a couple years but when civilization six came out i spent hours at a time like immersed in that game and so shout out by the way to the civilization series uh, another definitely blimp uh, in my historical sort of the history of Dr. Muscle's uh, experience with strategy of video games and board games, the Civilization series definitely deserves a shout out and a mention. So when I discovered Civilization, I remember way back in high school going over to uh, a classmate's house and he, he had had up civil this game Civilization and you know, I had asked him about it. I was over to do a, a project, and so, you know, we didn't really play it, but he kind of mentioned what it was like, and I remember thinking that it sounded really fascinating, you know, interesting. But I'd never played it for, you know, a couple of decades, really, until I finally ended up, I don't remember how it was that I finally came to play Civilization IV. But this was a game changer for me. I uh, really fell in love with Civilization IV. Uh, spent... Like I said, hours and hours and hours. And I mentioned a couple of years ago, that was actually Civilization VI. So Civilization IV probably goes back, what is it, seven, eight years, even further further back than that, a decade ago. Uh, Civilization V came out in between, obviously, in four, five, six. I wasn't as big of a fan, or at least I didn't play Civilization V near as much. But Civilization IV and Civilization VI deserve huge shout outs as far as I'm concerned, uh, because I've, I played those games a ton, and they are arguably my favorite you know video games of all time i would say uh civilization 6 came out on the playstation and uh, so that one i mentioned a couple uh, years ago how i became you know invested in that one that was on the playstation but primarily on the, the cpu some of you guys no doubt are familiar with the civilization series i finally got involved like i said in in iteration four but Civilization 4 and Civilization 6 in particular spent a ton of time playing, love those games. And I guess the last thing I, I have to mention is how it's been interesting, kind of segueing off of the Civilization discussion, how then there is this 
relationship between strategy video games, strategy video games, and strategy board games. You know, uh, in particular, how you'll get when one is is popular, you'll get sort of that then adapted into the other. So, for example, you've had several examples of strategy video games that have been adapted into you know the so, so games that started off as successful strategy video games so another one i would mention is xcom so further down right the console generations i played a lot of xcom beat this game i uh, played xcom one as well on uh what was it xbox 360 or something like that couldn't find that one for, for some reason but uh, XCOM is an, a, a perfect example of, and that one actually is a, a good one to discuss in terms of this, the tactics versus strategy distinction because there's both tactics involved when you have these battles with the aliens. And so, so half the game is like you're, you're on these missions and you have to take out, let's say, certain aliens or defend certain uh, bases. So half of it's like that, and that is what I would describe as tactical. You have to engage with the enemies and they're moving and so you have to react to, to what they're doing uh, and so it captures that sense of tactics but there's also then half the game is strategic in the sense that you have this base then that you're developing and you have to decide you know what elements you want to invest in and you know which ones you don't and who you should recruit and what types of uh, soldiers you should, you should recruit and so on so all of those are um, you know examples of strategy that are involved in the game but anyway, so there's that strategy tactics element of XCOM. But uh, the reason why I was originally bringing it up is it's an example of, to my knowledge anyway, the video game came first, right? A successful strategy video game that then was adapted into a, a awesome board game, I might say as well, a cooperative board game. And it's uh, got real time elements. So that's another mechanic. I don't know if I, I don't think I discussed that, the real time element where you, part of what you're doing in the game is on the clock, right? You're facing some time element involved. And so <clears throat> that is involved um, here in the, the board game, right? And it's cooperative. That's another sort of tag you get here associated with board games. That just means, right, you're working together. Uh, you're either winning together or you're losing together. Um, so anyway, lots of examples. What other, oh, uh, Civilization, right? <laughs> another example that of a game that started off as uh, a successful, you know, video game, hugely successful, one that was, uh, as I mentioned, right, a big deal for me, that then was made into board games. In fact, not just one, but I believe three different board games based on, again, the Civilization video game series. This one was about a decade ago came out. The newest one, and I just picked this one up relatively recently, the newest one, this is actually an expansion for it, and here's the original box for it. Uh, that's the newest one based again on Sid Meier's video game, Civilization. And there's a third one, I believe. It might be the, the oldest. <clears throat> don't, don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure there's a third one, which I don't have, that I think is uh, two decades old. And I should have mentioned that Going way back to like Civilization 1 or 2, then they released, released a space version kind of of a civilization that was very popular, Alpha Centauri, um, which is again a space version of Civilization. And fast forward, they kind of released something similar based again on Sid Meier's Civilization years later, decades later actually. So this is about five years ago now, called Beyond Earth, which again is supposed to be like provide the civilization fuel, but in space. So, and I should have mentioned one of the cool things that always stood out to me about civilization and that is again related to something we talked about with respect to strategy board games is that there's multiple paths to victory. So one of the ways you could win is actually going to space. So if you emphasize science, you can then be the first one to reach Alpha Centauri or whatever, some, some destination, I believe it was that. But you can then, depending on which iteration of the game you're playing, you could achieve an economic victory by amassing so much, you know, wealth, or you could, in all the uh, series, you can, you know, get a domination victory where you take out all the other civilizations. And one of the cool things about civilization as well is that there's all these historical leaders that are in the game. And so you'll pick one and they have all these various traits. And so certain ones, Napoleon, you know, are more inclined to, uh, 
combat and, you know, taking you out and spying on you and so on. And others, you know, Gandhi are more inclined to be peaceful with you. Anyway, all aspects of, again, things that we kind of talk about with respect to strategy board games, how there's these dis different elements involved uh, that you have to think about in order to do well in the game. So something that, again, really appealed to me about civilization. But going back to the main point I was starting with here, right, is that we've had very successful strategy video games that have then subsequently been uh, adapted into, often, in some cases, multiple strategy board games. And, and then, of course, it's worked the other way. So I mentioned the first strategy board game that I became familiar with. It was actually via the electronic adaptation of it, you know, on Xbox Live Arcade. That was actually the first word version I played. So there you had an example of a board game, right, that then became uh, a video game, right? So it works both ways. There's definitely this tight connection and relationship between strategy video games and strategy board games naturally. So I think that's all I, I wanted to say. I just wanted to, again, sneak this little blurb in about my history with strategy video games because, you know, I think it is certainly related to my history with strategy board games. So let's move on to part three, where we'll dive into the value of strategy board games and, you know, why it is I think we should be playing them.